had to add this to the beginning of the video. I just want to say I have this book I wrote. Please support my work. You know, uh, I'm really str I'm I'm struggling a little, little bit. Please support my work by buying a copy of my book. Um, uh, there's an Amazon link. You can also cash at me if you're in the United if you're in the United States, and I can mail you a copy. And um, yeah, I really appreciate that. So there's a link down in the description. Also, United States Communist Party website. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more on there soon. I'm putting that in the description too. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name's Austin Tamargo, and I'm making this video today entitled "How Black Revolutionary Culture Has Shaped United States Revolutionary Culture." So, the first thing I want to say is. I'm making this after about a week. I've, after the past week, I spent a lot of time listening to audiobooks uh, written by people involved in the, uh, you know, the uh, revolutionary movements uh, in the '60s, and even some of uh, Franz Fanon. I, I think that's how you pronounce his name, who wrote *The Wretched of the Earth*. He talks about the lumpen proletariat. And um, you know the colonized peoples and their struggles, and I read some of that. But then before I uh, read more of it, I went back and I read these these two books. I didn't read them. I listened to the audio book. One is called "Seize the Time: The History of the Black Panther Party" by Bobby Seale, one of the founding members, uh, along with Huey Newton, and. Um, the other one was Soul on Ice by Eldridge Cleaver, who uh, most of those writings, I, I, I think all of them, I'm not sure, but most of them was from when he was in prison. And some of them were even letters that he wrote uh, to people. And um, they, they, and he, he later joined the Black Panther Party and met up with Bobby Seale, you know. And he, in Bobby Seale's book about the history of the Panther Party, he talks about um, Eldridge and how he was excited for him to join them and everything like that and when I read these books I was really inspired and I really got a lot more perspective on this revolutionary culture in uh, the United States uh, and in in the black revolutionary struggle and and about the Black Panther I, I really enjoy reading these books and in a, in a sense it's made me realize how much our all of our struggles, all of the oppressed people's struggles are all, all interconnected. And by following the example of oppressed peoples try, uh, fighting for liberation, by learning from every different type of oppressed peoples and their struggle and the methods they've used, we further our collective struggle as all of the oppressed uh, people, you know, on the earth. And so the Black Panther Party was a Marxist-Leninist party. It is a Marxist-Leninist party. And um, the Black Panther Party has influenced United States revolutionary culture so much impacted it so much and and was very strong in the time when uh you know around and after the civil rights movement I had to gather my thoughts but um one thing I thought about I remember is that some have said I forgot who it was, but a, a, different people have said the only true culture is revolutionary culture. It is the culture of the oppressed peoples fighting to liberate themselves and ex express themselves and broaden their minds and liberate themselves mentally and physically. That's how true culture is produced. And like I said, I, I was really inspired by reading these books. I'm going to continue reading uh, The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. And I definitely suggest anyone who is interested in uh, the struggles of the, of the revolution in the United States 
and a different culture that's uh, gone on, definitely read these books. I'm going to put links to them, and I'm going to put links to this channel where I, I uh, you know, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks from. It's called, it's a channel on YouTube called Marxist Leninist Theories, and they have a lot of uh, playlists on their channel where they have all the different books up there. And, you know, just um, a lot, a lot, especially more in the, in the, um, in Eldridge Cleaver's book, Soul and Ice, it talks more about the psychological and sociological understanding and uh, philosophical outlook of the situation that, you know, uh, a lot of different uh, black people in the United States have, have felt and have, have seen, you know, the world at that, up until that point. And, you know, the culmination of all the forces, you know, of society coming together in that point in history. And the book Seize the Time by uh, Bobby Seale, that gives you more of a, you know, practical, historical, and um, like day-to-day, -day, like summary of, you know, the steps they took to uh, organize people, educate people. Uh, they talked about making a newspaper. That, that's the thing a lot of parties do, and, and they were able to fund their party. They were able to help so, uh, so many people by doing these programs they set up. And, and I've even seen articles of Black Panther still, different chapters of the Black pa Panther still operate in many cities in the United States and do great programs for the community. Uh, shout out to these, uh, I, I don't know what chapter they're under or whatever, but there's some people in Atlanta. I saw um, a video recently, these Black Panthers, they're raising money and they're giving single mothers uh, houses with them. So uh, I, that's really great. We need uh, more community support like that. And that's something that the Black Panther Party really focused on is organizing in neighborhoods and communities, you know locally you know the common people that's what that's what this is about a, a lot a lot of times uh i feel like a lot of uh communists or what some people call themselves leftists are focused only on their you know little friends friend circle or little online community or something and that that may be a judgment that's not always correct but the point is that we definitely need more people going out on the street, in the neighborhood, talking to people they meet, you know? Like in this town, a town I'm at right now, uh, it's, a, it's a town called Arcata in California. And I sometimes go up to people in the, uh, they have a town square in the middle of downtown. You know, people hang out there, chill, you know, talk in the park and stuff. And they're in this city and other cities, you know, I've been in cities where they have homeless shelters and I'll sit there and talk to people, pass out some pamphlets and just 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 anyone who is a working class person. Like don't go up to the obvious snotty uh, rich people. You can tell them bourgeois looking people, you know, the bourgeoisie walking around. Go to the people, you know, they're working class. I'm not saying judge people, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's an attitude thing and it's, it's a thing you can see, you know. It's the truth of the matter. And um, that should always be something that we're, we remind each other is that our, that's our mission is to reach out to the masses of people, the regular working class people. And so the a lot of the practical uh, methods and uh, theory, really it's a political theory uh, that pertains to the United States is discussed in that book, um, Seize the Time, by Bobby Seale. So I'm going to link those in the description. I really hope people will check them out because uh, they're really inspiring and really help me get more of an understanding of not only uh, black revolutionary culture, but United States revolutionary culture as a whole. Even in those books, they talk about, uh, you know, the different struggles. Now, it's at a point where we're more of an integrated working class and even upper class in society, but this is at the time, you know, not, not too long ago, only half a century ago, whenever it, they were just starting to integrate in a lot of states and places in the United States where they had only black people, only white people in places. E even in a lot of places in um, 
where I grew up in the southeastern part of the United States, there is a lot of white communities and black communities where it's predominantly, but it is more integrated, you know, and, you know, pe people are, pe the natural flow of society is going to go how it goes and it's going to go in phases, you know. I'm not going to get into this whole con uh, um, thing about integration because it, it's like sometimes I think uh, it, it, it's like a it's like a thing when liberals they try to say that integration is like is like all that that intersectionality or oh, there's a joke on the Facebook community uh, what they call left book it's called uh, intersectional imperialism. We have a lot of people from these developed countries, these rich people. They're like, oh. <laughs> Like like the one of the famous jokes, right? They're like, oh, we have all these uh, billionaires. The liberals say, oh, half of those billionaires should be women, or half of those uh, billionaires should be black, you know? But no, there shouldn't be no billionaires, you know? And the way that we can solve the problem of discrimination and a lot all of this racial uh, stuff is through establishing socialism and taking away the power from the capitalists. That's something the Black Panther Party knew and understood, and that's why, I, as a fellow Marxist Leninist, they have my unwavering respect. Um, there was another um, black figure, there was a quote I saw recently by him. He said, I forgot who it was, uh, so sorry about that, but he said, Racism is a power question. He said, if a white man wants to lynch me, that's his problem, if he wants to. But if he has the power to lynch me, that's my problem, you know? Because, and the, what enables, you know, this uh, discrimination, this violence against minorities that we still see in our society today is capitalism, is uh, a ruling class and a subjected class, the masses being subjected by this ruling class. And the uh, police force and the army are representing the interest of the ruling class. So the bourgeoisie in the United States have pushed this do doctrine, indoctrination on us for so long saying, okay, if we have equal opportunity in capitalism, <laughs> You know, for everybody, then they will be all prosperous. We all have civil liberty, you know. Uh, we all have uh, e e equality, but we really don't. You know, we see that today. You know, the only true uh, way to progress, you know, our social issues and make real progress on these social issues is through uh, taking away the power from the capitalists. Because the rural, a rural minority group of people, the rich billionaires, the CEOs, the bankers, corporations controlling the rest of us will always create a system where those people inflict their biases and prejudice on the rest of society and go 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 look at all my other videos to, to see why capitalism's bad. But, but yeah, basically uh, thank you all for listening. This this is uh, something I wanted a video I wanted to make after reading this book, and I've met some Black Panthers. Uh, I, I've actually met one in Atlanta. You know, I met one in uh, Kansas City. I've met a few of them traveling, and uh, I, w I wanted to pay my respects, you know, and uh, show my appreciation for this contribution to our revolutionary theory and our struggle. Thank you.